What's good? We have a very special guest. We have an ex-professional boxer and a, a now a boxing coach famously known for training the UK's number one internet personality, KSI's younger brother, Deji. We have Tommy Martin. How are you, Tommy? How are you doing, mate? You all good? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Not bad, thank you. Not bad. So, Tommy, before I talk about Deji, I want to talk about... I want to talk about you. How did you get into boxing and why? Um, basically, it's a funny story. I um, when I when I was um, when I was young, in my younger days, I before boxing, I was into football and uh, I used to play for for Fulham Football Club and uh, I was in the academy there. And uh, three days a week, I used to have to train for so much, and I used to play in the games on the weekends. So what my mum used to do, obviously. She'd bring my little brother, because my brother was too young to stay at home on his own, so she'd bring George. And uh, she'd get him a McDonald's three times a week. So naturally, he just put on a lot of weight. He was just a, he'd become a very fat kid. And uh, so one day my mum turned to him and said, George, what do you want, what do you want to do when you're older? He says, I want to be a wrestler. But not like, not like what you do at school as in, the, in America and that. He wanted to be in the WWE. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> The closest thing, the closest thing we could find to get him into wrestling was boxing. So she took him down to our local boxing gym, and she said to me, "Tommy, come on." It's like bribing me. Come on, he come, he comes to watch you everywhere play football. You got, you got to come and watch him box. So anyway, so one day I said, "Oh, I right, give in." So I went down to the boxing gym, and I absolutely, I just fell in love with it. I love seeing people punching pads, punching bags, sparring, get like. I even, I even went over to the trainer because I remember I had a really flat nose. And I said, cool. I said, I want one of them. And he, was, and he said to me, no, he said to me, you don't want a flat nose, mate. He said, that's the last thing you want. He said, you want to start moving your head a bit, otherwise you end up with one of these. And uh, yeah, I just fell in love with it ever since the first time I watched my little, brother, my little brother train. So now you've been into boxing for many years, so you know what it takes. So I want to ask you, what does it actually take to become a boxer? And do you have any advice for any upcoming fighters? Listen, I've always said, I've always said in boxing, you get out of boxing what you put in. If you if you only put in ten percent, you will only get out ten percent. If you put in hundred percent, you get out hundred percent. And this this is why when I was in, when I was in the amateurs, I was going to actually quit boxing after my last ABAs, which is like the Golden Gloves in America. When I was in the I was in the semi final. <coughs> And uh, I got robbed on the decision on the semi-finals. I said, that's it. I'm quitting boxing, never doing it again. Bro, bro, I hate, I hate, um, it's all corrupt and all that. Anyway, my dad said to me, Tom, just have one go. Just just give it one go as a pro, go on. So um, I went and I'll give it a go. I said, right, that's it. So I just devoted, as soon as I was 18, I turned professional. And uh, I signed with, uh, with Johnny Eames in the TK in London. And I went to live in London for, for five days a week. And uh, I lived in a little bed sit. I was training three times a day, five days a week. I thought, I'm just going to give it one proper go. And you know what? If, if it wasn't for the bleed, I'd still be boxing today. I absolutely love the game. People can train boxing, but actually partaking in boxing is like a whole different field. What made you want to have that first amateur fight? <clears throat> what it was, when the, I just loved fighting. I just loved fighting. Whether it was, whether it was at school, whether it was on a football field. I, I used to be a goalkeeper, and uh, if there was a fight on, the, if there was a fight up the top, I'd be the first one there before the midfield line. I'd be straight in. I just love the rat. I love the rat. So I thought, listen, I've got to channel this, and uh, yeah, I thought, why not get paid for it? Do you think those backyard brawls in school like helped you in the ring? Yeah, it meant it mentally tough because I just love a fight. Men, men, it, mentally tough. Like for instance, this day and age, like you see people ducking and diving, fighters this and that. Listen, there's a reason I'm the youngest ever English champion in history. And that's because I never ducked no one. I wanted, a, I, would, I would fight anyone. I was a promoter's dream because I'd sell 500, 600 tickets for a fight when I was only like 19, 20 years old. And I'd fight anyone. When I was 20 years old, I was fighting boys with records of 14 and ones, 14 and twos when I was 20 years old. How many boys do you see at 20 years old fighting against other people with those sort of records? You don't. You don't see it. So I just, I just literally, I was just on this, I was just on, I was just going so fast. I was going, I, I was probably going a bit too fast. I probably needed someone to pull the reins on me 
and slow me down, you know. But I was a, I was a remote stream. I was I was making them a lot of money, and I would fight anyone. So I, I it sounds a bit crazy, but I used to think boxing should be like tennis. Like it should be seeded. The best, like the best play the best in tennis all the time. Like yeah, sometimes Djokovic won, sometimes Federer won. Do you know what I mean? It's always different, yeah. But boxing, I know, I know it's painful. I know it's painful. And I know it's terror. But the best should still fight the best all the time. Yeah, so I know uh, you had a successful career in boxing and uh, you had a positive record, but I also know you lost a few fights. What was it like losing your first fight? I only lost one fight. Yeah, what was it like? I only ever lost one. What was it? That was, well, my, that was my last, I was, I was 13 wins undefeated. I was English champion, I was double, I was number one in the country top 25 in the world um, and then I got my shot for the Commonwealth and WBC and listen like I just said to you like obviously I don't go in I don't go in the ring expecting thinking oh, I'm gonna lose it so I'll, I'll just get stuck in no I still went in the ring with, like, with that winner's mentality like I'm, I'm gonna kill this I'm gonna smash it I'm gonna smash it but because I prepared so hard in training this is what this is what helped me get over a lot of like nerves about it when when I, when I was in them change rooms, it's a lot, it's, boxing's a lonely, lonely sport, let me tell you that. There's, if, you, if, if you don't train, you get found out, you get found out the hard way. That's the fun of the lights and the fun of it. all your friends and family, you get humiliated. But listen, I always could accept going into the ring, knowing if the man beats me, he's beat me because he's the better man. He hasn't beat me because I haven't done enough behind closed doors. As long as I've, I've turned every, um, every stone I've turned, as long as I made sure and ticked all the boxes in the gym and behind the scenes, I could go in that ring with full confidence knowing I'm the best me. And, but, and if you beat me, you beat me, you beat the best me, I'll come back from it. But obviously, I couldn't come back from it because I've got a bleed on the brain. Yeah. So, I mean, you got out from a devastating accident, man. It was very unfortunate because of your bleed on the brain. Like, how did, how did that affect you? Getting losing your passion and being forced to being taken out of the sport. It's like it's like someone ripping your whole life away and saying, right, look, because I never went to college, I never went to uni. I was I just thought I was going to box till I was 30, 35 and retire. You know, I thought that was going to be me done. But um, maybe not even 35 because I started I turned pro at 18, so I was probably I was probably retired for about 30. But because it got snatched away so soon. And I achieved so much. I sort of, of course, I appreciate everything I've done. I achieved in boxing, and I'm so grateful. But you get greedy. Like I started to get a taste of the good life, you know. And then it's like someone just ripping your whole life away and going, right, now start again. And you're like, hang on, I'm 21 years old here, with a whole big wide world in front of me. Like I had to move back home to Cambridgeshire, and then it's just like, what on earth do I do now? You know, so. But naturally, I never used to drink, I never used to smoke, I never used to party. And then as soon as I retired, I just I just went off the rails, started partying all the time, started drinking. That it just wasn't me, you know. And uh, but listen, I'm still not over it. I'm still I'll, I'll never be over not fighting again. But I've got two little kids now. I've got a little boy Thomas and I've got a little girl Arabella, and uh, they help they help me a lot. But. If it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for them, I'd, I've always said, and it sounds so bad, I'd rather one more year fighting than the rest of my life never knowing. That's how much I love this sport. You came off such highs to such lows. So say there was a viewer watching that faced a similar accident as yours and was forced away from the sport of boxing. What advice would you give to someone like that? No one cares. No one cares. You've got to go over yourself. You've got to dig deep. And it's, and it's a lonely, lonely road. When I retired, I had all these fake friends coming out of the woodwork saying there's going to help me this, help me that. No one done fuck all. And I can say, I'm sorry for swearing, but no one done nothing to help me. Mm. Only my close friends and family were there. And that's it. That is it. No flash promoters, no managers. No one was, no one done, no one was there for me, mate. And uh, that's what, that's what, that was a big kick in the team. And, and then, like I say to you, when, when I'm 27 now, I'm retired, 20, I'm six years down the line, and it still eats me up when I'm seeing all these faces, all these like promoters and managers that I used to work with. And then they, 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 they literally wouldn't bat an eyelid sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, I would message them, 
I'll, I'll text them that. And uh, there was only really there for me when it, when it suited them, when, when they looked good for it, you know? As soon as our boxing, boxers, sorry, were on this conveyor belt. Once, one to, once Tommy Martin pulls off the conveyor belt, there's another Tommy Martin to replace it. And that's whatever level in boxing. Once Andy Joshua goes, there'll be enough for someone like that to replace. Once Tyson Fury goes, there'll be another Tyson. There will always be someone to replace the boxer. So you're talking about your experiences with your promoters and stuff. It sounds like some promoters, they just want to use the fighter and they don't really care for the fighter's well-being. So say that... Say, Say there's an upcoming fighter. What is your advice for them to choose a promoter? Like, how 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 should they choose a right promoter? Think of it as business, because that's one thing I never. I had two big promoters coming to me at the same time, and uh, one promoter uh, offered me such a, such money, one promoter offered me such. But I went with the man that I thought was my friend. I went with the man that I thought was my friend, and. Uh, I didn't realise that boxing was a business because I was I was young and naive. I was enjoying it and loving life, you know. So I was, I was getting it felt like I was getting paid for free. So I'm doing something that I love. I love punching people's heads in. It was it was the best feeling in the world and getting a load of money for it. And uh, but listen, I went with the person I thought was my friend and I regret. It. So you say look at it as a business side first, then one hundred percent. Look second. after your look after your own arsehole because no one else will. They'll yeah. just want to ruin it. That's amazing advice, man. So after you, you were retired as a fighter, what made you want to rejoin the sport as a coach? Just to help you. It was, it was Vic, you know, from Vic's boxing gym. So uh, he's got his own gym in there. And uh, he, he was, but he found, I was in the gutter. I was in the gutter. I was heartbroken. I hated boxing. I didn't want to be part of it. And he said, Tommy, get yourself, sort yourself out. He said, look at you. Took yourself out one night. This was, and he said, "Let's." He said, "Let's get you back in the gym." And that was the last thing on my mind was going back to the gym. He said, "Listen, but do you know what it was? It's the only thing I know. Like I told you, I didn't go college, I didn't go uni. I haven't got no trade. My trade was boxing. Boxing is the only thing I, I know." And uh, he said, "Let's get let's let's get some fucking let's get let's sort yourself out and get get a little wage going for you." And you, you know what? He picked me up. He dusted me off. He got me in the gym. And I couldn't be any more busier in the gym if I tried. And we're, we're, from where I'm from, there's a place called Peterborough. We're not a big boxing community. There's, it's not like East London, where there's fighters on at a, at a gym on every corner of a street. We, we're, I call it Marshmallow Land, because everyone around here, this is why I used to have to move away. Everyone around here, I call it, call it Marshmallows, because all soft as shit, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so, but, yeah, that's me off. And do you know what? It was probably the best thing I'd done was going back to the gym and earning a pound note again for myself. Not having anyone blow smoke up my ass anymore. I, I really had to dig in deep and just, just get back to what I do. So, how is it like getting your first breakthrough fighter? Yeah, it was good. It was good getting a... Uh, I had Samir. Uh, yeah, it was, it, it was good. And um, looking to carry his journey on. Looking to go on another couple of pros now. But... Um, it, it still eats me up, man. I still look at them and I think, I'm telling them things, I'm showing them things. I'm like, just do this, just do this. <laughs> and, and it fills this fucking void I've got, you know? And uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. And I've got a great fighter coming through, a kid called Matt Cross. He's, um, he just won the, the amateur championship this year. No, oh, sorry, last year now. He just won the amateur championship. So shout out to Matt. He's going he's gonna to be one to watch. And uh, yeah, it's starting to pick up again. So. Uh, being a boxing coach, how did you get in contact with Deji and how did that work, the whole training Deji? That's a, that's a funny story, actually. I, um, so basically, when I was training at the, at a big gym, like we used to train like white collar fighters, unlicensed, things like that. And uh, Vic said, hey Tom, I've got this kid come in, he wants to train for an unlicensed fight. I said, yeah, no way. He said, uh, will you come and have a chat with him? So anyway, so I'm just having a chat, like I'm having a chat with you. And he's just telling me, yeah, uh, I said, so what, I said, so where do you find? He told me the date. So where are you find? He said, uh, Ebbian Arena, Manchester Arena. And I just laughed me head off. And I just said, I don't think you are, mate. I'm thinking maybe people are showing ground, people like Civic Hall sort of thing. I said, no, you won't be finding the Ebbian and an unlicensed fight. Anyway, I've gone home, I've told my little brother. 
was laughing my head off. I said, I've only got this donor. I said, he's a so delusional. He thinks he's fighting at Manchester Arena. He said, what's his name? I said, Deji. And my brother's about four years younger than me. And he's just gone. So he's all into his YouTube. And he, uh, he said to me, no way. He went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What? KSI, brother. KSI. And I was like... Yeah, in an interview I heard you say, and I think it was with Boxing Social, so when you first uh, saw Deji, you, you thought he was like taking a laugh, like joking with you or something. So after the first day, first day of training, you guys went to a coffee shop, and then a bunch of kids were going crazy over Deji. Seeing that reaction, Deji got going to the coffee shop, what were you thinking? Yeah, it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> Oh really? I think I think it was yeah, something like that anyway. And uh, yeah, everyone everyone was looking and watching him pull up and I was just like, Are they serious for this little gaming geek? <laughs> <laughs> they love him. The kids absolutely love him. And I was just I was absolutely star shock. I was like, What? I was so shocked, like, what is going on here? I was like, This is Deji. But like like me in my life, like, people know like I've been around I've been around stars all my life. But this YouTube, for some reason, this kids and this YouTube is just money, money, money. I can't get over it. I need to get myself a YouTube account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like... Even have a, I don't even have an account on it. Yeah, because like looking at Deji, you don't think like he'd be like outrageously famous. But seeing that reaction, like... It, 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 I remember, it was, we, we, we was leaving for the, press, uh, the first press conference in London when it was at your call. We, 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 we were driving out, we was getting escorted out. And, uh, anyway... Like you must have seen all the paint and all that coming down. It was, getting, mm. it was crazy. Kids trying to punch. They was that. They was. They was that mad in love with Deji. They were trying to punch the car in to get him out. <laughs> trying to smash the window just to have one more last look. But you think they hated him the way they was when they was acting. But they actually loved. They're that crazy for him. They love him. <laughs> he was middle. So that York Hall press conference. That was like straight out of a movie. Like, like expect. Yeah. Especially for the UK side, the Deji and KSI, like you guys definitely wiped the floor with that press conference. Logan Paul ran off the stage. We ruined them, didn't we? We ruined them. We absolutely ruined them. But that was that was that was me with Deji the whole way. Like even 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 with the press conference, the weigh-ins and everything. The reason I was kicking off like the weigh-ins and that things like that was because listen, if Deji done all his work behind closed doors. I would have had to. I would have had to be screaming and shouting that, but we. I felt like we needed to put a bit of fear into him, you know. So men, men, so I was oh, playing psychology games with, with all of the the pools the whole time, even down to. I don't know if you've seen it, but when I went, I went into the um, the changing room to watch him wrap his hands, and I got I got someone to give me a pen. I said, listen, I want to make sure. So, because in in professional boxing, you, you you sign the hand wraps to make sure they can't cut them off and put anything in the knuckles. So I said, give me a pen. So I'm, I'm done it all professionally. I, 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 put, I, I put mug on his hand wraps. M-U-G. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and, uh, and Jay's gone. And I said, listen, can I have a picture? I said, show me your hand so I can take a picture so you don't change it. Anyway, he's gone, hey, Tommy, what does mug mean? And I've just ran off laughing at him. And I was like, get in! This is all for four. He was about to do a ring walk just to try and mess with his brain again, you know? Do you think that those mind games you guys played played a factor in the performance that you had? One hundred percent, definitely, definitely. Because Jake's never had a boxing match before that fight, definitely. So I had to put a little bit of fear of God into him, you know, like make him think, "Oh, hang on, I'm up against it a bit here." And uh, I think, I think it helped. Like I'm not being funny. Like everything when Deji was with me. He trained hard when he trained with me. When he trained hard, when he was with me, I, he, he, he had no other option. I was, I said, listen, I walk away from you. I don't need you, Deji. You don't need me. I don't need you. Swim. We'll just we'll still be friends, but we'll just part ways, yeah? Anyway, so 
So when he was with me, he trained hard. But then when he used to go away from the gym, behind closed doors, I didn't. I was telling him, Dead, we put a five, six k run in today, mate. Tonight, mate. And he said, Yeah, coach. Yeah, coach. But he, he wasn't doing all that. You can see it the shape on the scales, but but definitely like mentally, I think I helped him in the mental side of it, where I made him believe. I made him believe in there. I made Deji believe in there that he he was going to smash this Jake. And and I think look at look how I'm not being funny. I know people don't like YouTube boxing, but Jake's smashing the YouTube boxing at the minute, and he's knocking key blokes out cold. Yeah, and this Deji managed to go four or five rounds with him. Yeah, five rounds. I yeah, I think Deji's done. Yeah, I think Deji's done. Like, I think to get Deji when he first walked in my gym. It was like a bag of shit with a snapback on. That's the only way I can describe it. He couldn't throw a punch to save his life. Yeah? And uh, so uh, to manage to get into five rounds with that Jake, I was, I was well chuffed with him. He, he, he done that. The reason I threw the tail, he'd done enough in my eyes. He didn't need to take no more damage, you know? So, I mean, like, there's always rumors about, like, Deji not putting in enough work into the camps and stuff, but you're actually with him on a day to day. You're there with him grinding, punching the bag. What what went wrong in the Jake Paul camp, would you say? He didn't want it enough. Simple, simple as that, he didn't want it enough. He didn't believe how big an event was going to be, you know? Like, I kept telling him, Dej, Dej, it's your reputation on the line, mate. It's your reputation on the line. And uh, listen, like I've said to the many, many times about this situation with Deji, I love Deji. I think he's, he's, he's all right, he's, he's cool. But listen, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make the horse drinking. And that is the bottom line of when I train Deji. You can tell us to do this and that and this and that, but listen, Deji don't want to do something. Deji just won't do it. He runs with like a big, a big kid. He's a big, like, naughty, naughty kid, you know? And uh, the difference with his brother and the difference with Jake Paul. Look at Jake Paul. Look, I take my hate out to Jake. He's trained. So we don't get humiliated on the big stage. And that's how you got to train. You've got to, you've got to love it. He loves what he does. He, he doesn't class himself as a YouTuber. Anymore. He classes himself as a boxer. And, and I, 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 respect, I respect his hustle because he trains like a maniac for it. And that's what I say in boxing. You get out of boxing what you put in. So what do you make up of uh, all of the Jake Paul boxing? Like, do you think he's good for the sport or bad for the sport? At the start, I thought it was embarrassing. I thought, oh, what's all this? But you know what? The more I look into it, the more I, I respect him. I think he's brought, he's brought money to the game. He's helping out, like, even, even on his undercard, the undercard fighters are getting paid more. Um, He's bringing, he's bringing new eyes to boxing. He's bringing, I've, got, I've got my own amateur class. Like, I trained uh, Stanford ABC with another couple of boys. And uh, listen, we're, we're getting kids coming into the gym saying, I said, oh, how come you started boxing? Like these like 12, 14 year old boys. How come you started boxing, mate? Oh, what's what you to? And they say, oh, Jake Paul, Jake Paul, man. <laughs> they, they, that's, that's crazy for this, for Jake. So, so you know what, for that reason, for, for, for him getting kids in, in through my through my door, I'm grateful, you know. So that's yeah. So there's in the YouTube boxing space, there's like a mecca fight, the me, the mega fight, and the fight that everybody's waiting to see, the highly anticipated KSI or Jake Paul. Who who do you think's winning that fight? Uh, for me, for me, Jake Paul. Uh, listen. KSI, you know, you know if, it was, if it was a year ago, I would have said KSI. But this last year, he's kept Jake Paul's just mentality has just tra changed in the game, you know. And like I said, he classes himself as a boxer. KSI doesn't. KSI is a musician. He's he's a YouTuber. He, he does all these different things, you know what I mean? He's got his new energy drink, you know what I mean? KSI, KSI isn't, doesn't... He's spinning too many plates, I, I say, where Jake Paul's just spinning boxing, 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 boxing all the time. He just focuses on boxing. Where KSI's got all these two different, two different many avenues that he can go down, you know? Okay, let's say KSI had a full training camp. He stopped the sidemen, he stopped the, the energy drink, stopped the music, just boxing. If he, if he put his foot on the pedal and said, I'm boxing, you think he would win then? It'd be a good fight. It'd be a great fight. Um, I definitely want to watch it, but um, I don't know. I don't know. It all depends. It all depends how 
what Jake's really doing behind closed doors, who he's actually sparring. I know he says he's sparring with world champions and all that, but if he's doing all that, then I would probably favour Jake at the minute because he's just he's got that momentum going with him, going and going. He's just getting stronger and stronger, you know. But last, if it was last year, then I'd probably say KSI. But JJ beat the older brother, no? Yeah, but Jake Paul's a lot better than what's the other one called? Logan Paul. Logan, yeah. Really? Yeah, 100%. No way. 100% Jake's definitely better than Logan, 100%. So if Logan and Jake had a fight, you'd say Jake would win? 100%, yeah, definitely. Really? But Logan has the yeah. size advantage. The size, the reach, and all that. I know that, but this, Jake's just tapped. Jake was just tapped kids, you know? That's why they call it the problem. <laughs> but don't you think the mental there would be a mental factor because he's a little brother, you know, because you always get the older yeah, brother probably. beat down. Probably, probably, but you, you won't see that fight. You won't see that brother's fight. So that's, that's a silly question. But uh, yeah. the chaos side of Logan Paul would be a very interesting fight. And a fight I'd definitely watch. Yeah. What do you make up of all the antics Jake Paul's doing, like such as like making the losers in his fights get a tattoo? He's just trying to spice it up a bit. He's trying to change the game, and he, you know, what I mean, he's trying to give it, he's trying to do the standout part. But um, yeah, I don't, don't bother me. <laughs> so that's nothing to do with me. So I just stay out of it. Don't have no opinion on it. So like, uh, Jake Paul is very clearly like cherry picking his fights. Do you feel like he could be a, a real professional fighter, like a real guy? This is the thing. You need. He needs to be fighting. He needs to be fighting like. Other coming pros that are up, like other coming, up and coming pros, like say like, about five or six fights, or maybe even ten fights. But um, yeah, he does need to fight someone now who's been game. Like you, Tommy Fury, that would have been a great fight for him. That would have been a great chance. And if he really did believe in himself, what a stepping stone to have, and what a name to have, you know. But um, yeah, I thought that would have been a great fight. And I really hope they do get on. But by the sounds of it, I think. I think the Fury, I think Fury's lost that fight now. I don't think they're gonna, I don't think they're gonna fight him now, are they? Yeah, I doubt it. So, th what did you think of the Logan Paul versus Mayweather fight? I, I thought it was what it was. It was a big, big man against a little manly man. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was just an exhibition at the end of the day. It was nothing. I don't take that. Like, people were slating Mayweather for that fight. People were slating Mayweather for taking all these like. Who's this other kid he's fighting? This new kid he's fighting. Uh, Money kicks. Money kicks. That's it. Yeah. Like, but listen. At the end of the day, Floyd Mayweather has even said it himself. He is the only legitimate bank robber in the world that can get away with it. Like, he 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 literally just goes in for one night's work, robs a hundred million pounds to fight this money kick, for instance, and walks out. You know what I mean? That is literally bank robbing. That bank robbery. You know? And. Uh, so for that for that reason, I'll I'll, I'll take my hat off to him. He's he's cemented his legacy already. Forget legacy, yeah. These fights will not represent like in twenty thirty years time. You won't be thinking when he was doing these exhibitions. You'll be thinking flipping out like all the great all the world titles he had through numerous weight divisions. You know what I mean? His style, his slickness, the the way he managed himself. You know, promoted himself, everything. You won't be thinking about these exhibitions. He's just he's just check he's just signing them checks, baby. But don't you think the the money kicks fight is like a disgrace? Cause money kicks, he never even had a pro fight. Like he he's like. I agree. He has I agree, but it doesn't. I agree, but listen, if someone put hundred million pound in cash in front of me and said you got to fight this kid that's never had a fight, oh, I'm you're doing that. that. I would go. I would go for you, <laughs> Straight to the bank, eh? Straight to it, straight to the bank, mate. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, no problem. Get as if fighting on some helipad or something. I've seen a name in the fire. Yeah, my my uncle, my uncle's he, my uncle's gonna invest in that. He's a co-investor. Yeah. So what 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 is it? What what is what is the, the whole event? Bitcoin. Yeah, they're they're per, they're promoting a cryptocurrency. Like uh, I think it's called Coco Swap or something. Yeah. So, so in, what's, your uncle, what's your uncle got to do with it, sorry? What, he's a sponsor? Uh, yeah, he's a co-investor. Cool, you must have some money. <laughs> <laughs> you must have some dingo dollars. Um, yeah, something like that. I mean, <laughs> so in the sport of boxing, there's like 
two divisions that are like dominating like crazy the heavyweight division and the lightweight division who do you think who do you think are like the kings of each division like you can't you gotta say the king is the gypsy king the number one is the gypsy king um and then the lightweight well, first we've got to go you midway you've got to go to your canellos you've got to yeah. go to your super middles your canellos all that look how he's dominated four fights a year at a, a championship level proper proper boxing championship level and he's whooping these guys he's wiping the floor with these guys you know um and then the, your lightweight your javante davises He's, he's like little tank man. He's, he's, he is the, he is the man at the minute. Little tank. Um, you got I like that Garcia coming through. He's all right. Uh, Devin Haney's. You know, good top top division, top division that lightweight division at the minute. It's booming. So in the heavyweight division, there was like a really big upset, especially for the United Kingdom. Uh, Anthony Joshua versus Usyk. Uh, do you think AJ can come back from this loss? Listen, he's got to, isn't he? He's got to, he's got to, he's got to have the rematch. So I'm not being funny, he can't. How can he, how can he go for all these fights, knocking all these bums out, to have the bad performance? But I think he'll just do, like, like he rectified the Ruiz one. I know Ruiz coming very, very fat for that fight, but uh, he rectified that. So let's hope he rectifies the Usyk fight so we get to see the, the big showdown. Yeah. The fight all the fans want to see. So, what did you make of the Wilder vs. Fury trilogy? Yeah, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. The first fight, I thought Fury won. The second fight, he won clearly. And the third fight, he just went straight through him. Like you said, he was going to do like a hot knife through butter, didn't he? Do you think AJ beats either Wilder or Fury? Do I think who? AJ beats either Wilder or Fury? No way. No way. Uh, no way. AJ's a number three. Fury boxes, boxes his head off, and Wilder, Wilder would just probably chin him. He's got wow. Nothing. Wilder has got bombs in both hands, man. Yeah. So looking at this, like Gypsy King's number one, Wilder's number two, and AJ's number three. But like Wilder and Fury are no Wilder and AJ. They're not the type of guys to be like runner-ups, right? It's like one or nothing. So like yeah. with Wilder, like do you think it's time for him to hang up the gloves because like not a runner-up well, kind of I've been, I've been asked this before, someone said this to me before, just be wild to retire now, he's lost. Why? He's only lost to one man, really. I know he's lost three times or twice in a draw, but he's only lost to one man. And that one man is beating and whooping everyone's ass, whether it's Klitschko, whether it's uh, Wilder, he's whooping everyone. So uh, listen, he's only lost to one man. If, he, if, he wants, if he's got it in there, it'll come back, you know, if he wants it. If, but he doesn't need the money. If he doesn't want it, he don't want it. That's, up, that's completely up to him. I mean, like, w what other fights are left for Wilder? He has the AJ fight, and then maybe the Dillian White fight. But after that, like, he's not like a runner-up kind of guy, you know? Yeah, I know. I know you mean. Um, listen, maybe when if if AJ does go straight, if, if AJ goes straight through, Uzi, hopefully this, which we all want, we will, we all, so we will get our big show, British showdown. Hopefully, if AJ beats Uzi this time out, then. Then you could always have Usyk versus Wilder, couldn't you? We were waiting for that big, big, like the big mega UK fight in uh, the UK fight, AJ versus Fury. You, you think Fury just walks through AJ? Yeah, I think, I think, I think he boxes his head off. I think he boxes his head off with, with, with his amateur pedigree, with, with his, just even, even as a pro man. Look how he, just pl he plays with fight, he plays with the heavyweights, you know? He's an extra foot taller. If, if he's sitting on like, when I, when, I was out in, when I was out in Marbella, man, he makes a Range Rover look, 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 look like a smart car is that big. <laughs> and uh, he just plays with people, plays with them. And, he, and he's so mentally tough and mentally strong. He, he's crazy, the man is crazy. He, he, he's believing in himself that much. That is half the battle with boxing. If you believe in yourself, you're fit. You won the fight. If you've obviously got the goods, which he does, and he does have the goods. So, speaking of Tyson, his half-brother Tommy, he's also a boxer. Do you think Tommy can live up to Tyson's legacy? No. No one in that family can live up to Tyson's legacy, man. No way. No way. Do you think he has a career in boxing? Yeah, he has a career. 
career in boxing, of course, yeah, of course, especially with his name and that. Of course he does, he can be looked after. But um, it would have been, it would have just been a great fight for him, for Jake, Jake Paul, just to blow his name up and, uh, and uh, just, it would have been a great competitive fight because at the end of the day he's just been boxing journeyman as well. So, in the lightweight division, who, who do you think's number one? Out of Ryan Garcia, Tank, Haney, Cambosis, Teofimo Lopez. I, love, I just want to give Cambosis a shout out, man. Cambosis is sick. He shocked the world, mate, didn't he? Crazy. Absolutely shocked the world. As a, as a person, Cambosis, I like him as a person. But boxing wise, you got to go for Tank, didn't you? Do you think uh, Tank beats Cambosis? Yeah, I think so. But then Cambos just, just shocked everyone, so why can't he shock him again? Yeah. And I'd love to see him shock. I'd love to see him just stay up there and shock, keep shocking everyone. Tank? His hand speed is phenomenal. Tank was struggling in his last fight, right? Yeah, I did see that fight. Yeah, I did think he was struggling. But you know what? You, you have off days. Everyone has off days, you know? But um, he's still got the win. He's still got the win. But uh, I would love to see Cambos just upset the absolute odds of beating all. Do you think Lopez can make a comeback? Yeah, definitely. This is what I'm saying. This is what I say to Bad Fox. This is what I said. You just said it there. Just, just because he's had one loss, why shouldn't he come back, you know? I think if you quit, that says more about the person than anything, you know? If you, if you quit after one loss, yeah, yeah, I had to. I was forced to retire, yeah? But if I, when I lost my fight, so what? I'll come back again, I'll fucking fight him again, I'll fight him again, I'll, I'll do what I have to do to get back in that position I was in, you know? Boxing should be like tennis, everyone, the best should fight the best, man. And that's how it should be, you win, you lose, you draw, whatever, get on with life. Yeah, so, you know how I was telling you my uncle's, uh, he's a co-investor in the Floyd fight in Dubai? Uh, yeah. I might be on the undercard because of my uncle's connection. I'm fighting a YouTuber named Adam Sala. Have you heard of him? No, I haven't, no. Good yeah. boy, good boy. Yeah. You better try it on. Listen to what I'm saying, take my advice. Yeah, so do you have any advice for me? I, I, I mean, I've been in the ring for a while now, but do you have any advice? Have you sparred? Have you sparred? Yeah, I sparred a few times. How'd you feel? How'd you like? How'd you get on? I mean, I, I'm a power puncher, I'd say. You're a power puncher, yeah? Yeah. You've got to send me some videos, I'll give you some tips. But listen, do you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoy it. Do you, do you enjoy going to the gym? Yeah, I enjoy going to the gym. Do you enjoy lacing up the gloves and putting the gum shield in knowing you've got another man across the side of the ring that's going to try and rip your head off? Yeah, 100%. There you go then, that's half the battle. If you enjoy it and you love it, who's to tell you not to do it, you know? Yeah. Man, it was sick talking to you, man, and like, I know, I know, like, I messed up last time. I want to thank you for the opportunity, giving me another <laughs> chance. And Tommy, man, you're the GOAT. It's always lovely <laughs> talking to you. Like, uh... No worries, bro. You got a friend from across the pond, man. <laughs> thank you, Tommy. It was lovely having no you on. All right. Thank you. Have thank a good one. Time.